Part 4, Chapter 6, Bets After she agreed to get revenge, Draco packed up his things, grabbed Hermione's hand, and led her back to their common room. When they were away from prying ears, he spoke. What made you change your mind? She shook her head. Sometimes you can only take so much of something before you snap. And this is you snapping? He asked, moving towards the couch. She gave him an amused smile. More or less, she replied, following after him and sitting down beside him. All right then, who's our lucky victim? She shook her head, amused. Well, I'm not quite sure. Okay, Granger, let's think. Who hates you so much that they would tarnish your reputation by allowing you to kiss me? Draco pipes up. She raised her eyebrow. Allowing me? More like forcing me. The only ones I can think of is you, the entire Slytherin body, and oh, maybe Lavender Brown. She still thinks I have a thing for Ron. Draco nodded. Well, you can cross me off the list, he stated dryly. You know, Malfoy, I've been thinking. He gave her a look that seemed to say, when aren't you thinking? She smiled and continued. I don't think that the enchantment was meant for me. You think it was meant for me, he guessed. When she nodded, a smug smile appeared on his lips. Well, of course it was for me. What girl wouldn't do whatever it takes to get my attention? He flashed her a dazzling smile, then ran his hand through his hair, as if he was Adonis reincarnated. She let out a snort, then blushed at the unladylike sound. He watched her cover her mouth with her hand, then a sudden thought hit him. Do you know if the enchantment is traceable? Her eyes widened. She hadn't thought about it. You know, I'm not sure. I'll send an owl to George and ask. She knew the redhead would help because he loved causing trouble. She quickly got up and pulled out a piece of parchment and a quill. She scribbled a letter to George explaining her situation and asked him if the potion was retraceable. After finishing, she sealed it and put it in her bag so she could mail it first thing in the morning. When she was done, she sat back down by Malfoy. She looked at him out of the corner of her eyes. His eyes were focused on the fire that he had created when she left. Who do you think it was? She wondered. Daphne or Astoria Greengrass or maybe Pansy. Actually, I bet it was Pansy, he replied as he closed his eyes. The crazy bint is obsessed with me. Hermione shrugged. Honestly, I've been thinking it was Daphne Greengrass. Why is that? He asked. You haven't noticed? He turned his head and looked into her eyes, waiting for her to continue. She almost squeaked in surprise at how close they were now, but she didn't move. His silver eyes consumed her, and she suddenly felt nervous. Um, well, she follows you around a lot, and stares at you as if you were her knight clad in green armor, the Gryffindor stated, turning her face away from his. Jealous, Granger, he teased, smiling when her cheeks tinted red. It amazed him that after all the history they had, he was able to sit here and tease her playfully, as if they had been friends for years instead of weeks. Hermione shook her head at his playful words. Am I jealous? She questioned herself. But of what? It couldn't possibly be because of Daphne's stalking habits, could it? No. She shook her head again. She definitely wasn't jealous. She was just, mm, perceptive. A small part of her knew she was lying. However, she chose to ignore it. What do you say, Granger? She blinked, turning her attention to the blonde. Say, to what? She asked sheepishly. She was so lost in thought she hadn't even heard him speak. Betting. She raised her eyebrow, her chocolate brown eyes filled with curiosity. A bet? What kind of bet? The simple kind, he joked, closing his eyes once again. You think it's green grass, but I think it's pansy. So? So, if I win, you let me take you out on a date. Her eyes widened and her heartbeat sped up. He wanted to what? She freaked out internally. She tried to wrap her head around his words. Why would he want to take her out on a date? They had only been friends for a few weeks. But the real question she found herself asking was this. Did she even want to go on a date with him? And if I win, she breathed trying not to let it seem like his words had affected her as much as they did. His lips twitched into a smile, not a smirk or a cocky smug grin, but a real smile that reached his eyes and caused his perfect white teeth to show. 
Well, if you win, Granger, then you get to take me out on a date. Draco had come to terms with his feelings that night after he subtly asked Hermione out. He laid in his bed trying to sleep, but his mind clouded with the feeling he was trying to get used to. Love wasn't expressed very well in the Malfoy household. George's response came three days after Hermione had written him. She was sitting in the Great Hall talking with Ginny when his owl appeared. It was funny-looking thing, black with bright yellow eyes and a snappy attitude. It landed by her with a small package and a small letter attached to its foot. Is that Waddleton? Ginny asked when she spotted the bird. Hermione nodded, untying the letter from its foot and opening the package after it flew away. What did George send you? Ginny, who knew nothing about Hermione and Draco's revenge plan, was curious. Hermione, who never held anything from Ginny, spilled the beans. She told her everything, from the revenge plan to the bet that he had tricked her into. At least she told Ginny he tricked her into agreeing. She didn't want to admit to the redhead or herself that maybe she wanted to go out on a date with him. Ginny gave Hermione a knowing smirk, but the brunette ignored it. She opened the letter from George and read, Hey, Miney, so you want to get revenge? I would too if someone made me snog the ferret. The steps are simple. One, pour the potion attached to the letter over the spot where the enchantment was formed. Two, a pink cloud will rise and show you the exact time the enchantment was set. Almost like those muggle inventions, the security tracer or recorder, a uh, camera, you know what I mean. Three, the image will only play once, so make sure you pay attention. Good luck with your revenge and with the ferret. Owl me and tell me how it goes. George. She smiled at the letter before tucking it into a small vial into her bag. Then she enjoyed the rest of her time chatting with Ginny. That is, until Harry and Ron showed up. Not that she minded Harry's presence. He did nothing wrong. It was Ron she was still mad at. Even though he had yelled at her weeks ago, Hermione couldn't help but hold a grudge. When they sat down, Hermione said nothing. She simply gave Harry a small nod, ignoring Ron completely. This, of course, made him furious. So, what have you been up to, Miney? Harry asked. Hermione shrugged. I've been studying for the newts, she replied. Harry laughed. Something for a change. Hermione rolled her eyes playfully. Ron scoffed. And I bet Malfoy's your study buddy. Are you trying to imply something, Ronald? She asked, turning her head towards the redhead, a scowl replacing her smile. Well, we all know what studying implies, he retorted. Just because you and Lavender don't have the brain capacity to read or understand books when you study doesn't mean everyone else is like that. Ron rolled his eyes, his face turned darker than his hair. He turned his head away and started piling his plate with food. Hermione scrunched up her face in disgust when he downed an entire sausage, then turned to Ginny. I'll see you later, Jin. I'm suddenly not hungry anymore. Bye, Harry. Harry waved. Okay, Hermione, see you later. Oh, and let me know who wins the bet, Ginny replied with a wink, while Harry and Ron looked at her with a raised eyebrow. Draco had just finished Quidditch practice. He was walking back from the Quidditch pitch, joking around with Teal and Blaze when she found him. When he spotted her, a large grin appeared on his face. Granger, you're a long way from the library, he teased. I got the letter, she replied with an eye roll. His grin turned devious. He turned to Blaze and Theo, saying, Well, mates, it looks like I have a change of plans, he spoke. Should have known he ditched us for Granger, Theo teased. Blaze sighed dramatically. I guess it can't be helped. Who knew Draco was this whipped? The two laughed hysterically while Hermione blushed. Draco rolled his eyes at his two mates, muttering, Gits. He stormed away from them, dragging Hermione along with him. When they reached a good distance, he asked her what the letter said. She answered him while leading them down different corridors. When they got to their destination, they looked around to make sure the hallway was empty. When it cleared out, she pulled out the vial and poured the potion on the ground. Instantly, a pink cloud appeared, raising from the ground until it was eye level. Exactly as George said, the pink cloud displayed a foggy video of a girl with medium-length black hair. 
They could only see the back of her head as she poured the Weasley product on the ground. The video was soundless, but Hermione guessed she was muttering an incantation as she waved her wand around. The pink liquid soaked into the ground. The brunette turned around with a smirk on her face. Hermione's heart skipped a beat. It was Pansy Parkinson.